This is the Retirement Mentality Channel. If this is your first time here, welcome to the channel. And if you're returning, thank you very much for coming back. We appreciate that. Today, I want to talk about the impending real estate crash of 2020, 2020, or 2021, or 2022, 22, 22, or 23, or 24. Nobody seems to really know. All the experts and the gurus, gurus are all predicting doom and gloom, real estate crashing, and they're all putting out all these videos but they're all full of baloney. I mean, all real estate is local. So these guys are who are all talking about real estate's gonna crash, it's a national thing everywhere, that we're gonna have foreclosures everywhere. They're all full of it, and I'm gonna tell you why. Let's get into it right now. There's really only a couple things that affect real estate prices or booms or busts or recessions, depressions, crashes. And that's but the first thing is going to be supply and demand. So when you have less supply, you have more demand and prices go up. And conversely, when you have less supply, more supply and less demand, prices go down. It's a converse relationship. Supply, demand, prices. Got it? Everybody knows this. It's just like when you had when we ran out of hand sanitizer on the planet and toilet paper, people could have charged whatever they wanted for toilet paper because there was no supply. It's the same thing with the housing market. And we've been in a seller's market since even before this pandemic started. So we've had low inventory and we've had high demand. I'll link to an article here uh, in Red from Redfin that talks about the migration of people moving out of the cities and into the, um, into the suburbs. You know, this is one of the things, like I say, all real estates local i'm going to say it 10 times in this video because that's what you need to hear you know people are wanting to get out of the big cities and they're moving to the suburbs they're wanting to get away from you know densely packed in people to get away from more coronavirus exposure not to mention the taxes and the restrictions and everything else in the cities i think this is kind of the straw that broke the camel's back for people living in big cities and they're migrating out of these cities to the suburbs so that you could see some big cities with prices going down because too much inventory. And in the surrounding areas, you can see prices going up because of low inventory and higher demand. So this is not something that's gonna happen on a national level, but this is something that definitely could impact some cities and the areas surrounding cities because people, a lot of people can't just work remotely even if they're working from home. You might need to go to the office once or twice a week even if you just need to steal paper clips or get free photocopies off the photocopy machine, people still need to go into the office for certain things. So they're not just moving to, everybody's not moving from New York, New York to Lincoln, Nebraska. They're still staying in the area so they can be closer to work. Another big effect that could have on real estate and prices is rates. Now this is something that could, could affect more on a national level. If interest rates go up, everybody knows we're at all time low on rates right now. So if rates start to go up, that could slow the whole market down. Um, but that's not necessarily a, a coronavirus uh, side effect. That's just what rates are going to do. And that's more about the economy. So let's get into the other big thing is employment and income. This is a big thing for people buying and selling properties. A lot of people may be going from a two income family to a one income family, or maybe your hours got cut or you lost days at work or whatever. A lot of people I think are going to be dealing with lower wages or lower income than they were before this whole thing started. So that could mean that people are downsizing. That could mean people are moving to cheaper neighborhoods. So that could have an effect on this. That is also, again, more localized. All real estate is local. To find these things out, you can go to um, like zip data. Here's a map from those guys that show kind of a heat map of what unemployment looks like. Uh, here's, I'll put another, I'll link to another map right here where you can look at um, unemployment insurance and you can see what states have different unemployment insurance. And you know, this is, you have the Google abilities, you have the ability to find this data and you need to go, like we talked about with migration, with the, that Redfin article, people were migrating. I'll put a link in here to a migration map um, this is from Zumpers, so you can see, you can manipulate some of the data over on the side to like make it more specific to what you, area you're in. So all this data is out there and it's available. If you're curious about the real estate market crashing or what prices are gonna do, whether you should sell your house, whether you should buy a house, um, you need to do a little bit of Googling, find out these things that are in your neighborhood. 
Um, you know, you can even go on Zillow. You can look at days on the market. You can look at number of listings. You can look at pendings. You can look at solds. As a realtor, I have easier access to those things. But even the average person, except you're not an average person because you're on this channel. So be sure to hit that like button down there. And if you haven't subscribed already, do that as well, because we all know that you're above average and you're seeking out the best advice and knowledge you can find on the YouTube. So good job for you. Um, but find the local knowledge that, you know, all real estate's local. So find the local information close to you. You could look at moving, moving company data, like where are people renting moving trucks on to, and where are they dropping them off to see where people are migrating to. I think the migration reports is something if you want to track the localized areas of real estate that could possibly crash or could possibly boom, I think those migration reports are very important. And in your local area, the listing information like days on market, number of listings, number of pendings, number of solds, that's also very important. And if you can't find that data on your own, on your own, you can always reach out to a real estate professional like myself. We're happy to try to get that data for you in the markets where we work. Some of these unemployment numbers are pretty scary, like 20 million people out of work, 11% of the workforce unemployed. Um, you know, there's 6.6 .6 million people who just said, you know what, I'm done, screw it. I ain't going back to work, it's, I'm done. And there's 6.6 .6 million people who have exited the workforce, they're not coming back. 30%, they're estimating 30% of small businesses aren't gonna make it through this. And you know, this is something, that's a small town effector, small towns that are based on small businesses. Like I used to live in Bozeman, Montana and that's a small town based economy there's not a lot of big players you got your walmart and your home depot and such but there's a lot of small businesses there and for instance in 2008 they were really hard hit by the market that's where i was living in 2008 and i went broke three properties foreclosed on me lost everything no money dead broke to zero so you know those smaller towns who are dependent on those smaller businesses or could be in jeopardy those could be some places that are hard hit by this but the difference between the 2008 real estate crash and now is that after 2008, the banks really tightened up the lending restrictions. You know, in 2008, there was a lot of people who did who were doing 100% financing. They didn't. They had zero equity in the property. So when the when they owed more than the value, as values dropped because of the crisis, they still owed more. So nobody's going to work 10 years to pay a mortgage to get back to zero. All those people just said, screw it, I'm out. They walked away, they let the banks have the properties. So I don't think that's gonna be the case this time around. Since the banks tightened up the restrictions, more people have equity in their houses and they're gonna do everything they can to keep that equity. Um, they say between four and five million people have filed for forbearance, which means they didn't pay their mortgage for a next couple of months. And it's a pain in the ass to get on forbearance and there's some risks involved with that and they're not, you know, they're not skipping payments, they're getting tacked on to the end of the loan. So people aren't doing this just to skip a payment or two, they're doing it because they're really in trouble and they need help. So four to five million people in forbearance is a big number. I said in June, 30% uh, of people did not make their mortgage or their rent payments. So the, the PPP started back in March. I think what happened was in, in April and May, people started to get those PPP checks and what did they do with the checks? Did they pay their rent? Did they pay their mortgage? No, they did what every American does. They went out and they bought a new TV and a new bike for their kid or whatever they did. Nobody thought this was gonna drag on. Everybody thought, oh, free money. Now those people are starting to be in trouble. So hopefully these people are taking their PPP money now or their unemployment or whatever, and they're catching those mortgage payments up or at least putting them into a bank account so that they can catch them up and they better be out there beating the streets to find a job. We're starting to see unemployment numbers rebounding a million, 1.2 per month, getting back into the workforce. But it's gonna take a long time to get 20 million people back into the workforce. The lesson here is, what did we learn today, folks? Raise your hands, everybody, bonus points. All real estate is local. So these gurus and everybody who's saying that this is gonna be a nationwide housing crisis, I think they're all full of baloney. I think that there are localized places, especially big cities could be hard hit. We all know that commercial real estate has been hit pretty hard. All the people, all the businesses are finding out that people can work from home. And so I think a lot of those people are gonna be canceling office or uh, terminating office leases and, or downsizing at least if they have an office staff of 30 and 20 of them can work from home. So we know commercial real estate could be in trouble from this. 
Um, and I think the same thing could be true for big cities. I think a lot of my predictions I made like two months ago are holding pretty strong still. So the all real estate's local. You have the data available to you. Go and find it um, if that's what you want to learn about. But don't just believe that the sky is falling and we're going to have a nationwide crisis of real estate. I just don't think that's going to be the case. So there's a lot of places that are still prices are going up. And where I do business in Florida, they're still going up. Where I am here in St. Thomas, we haven't seen prices go down at all. We have low inventory. We still have buyers. I just showed property yesterday to a family from Las Vegas who Vegas is locked down. They think the casinos aren't opening back up. They think that could be a depressed area. So they want to get out of their house there and they want to come somewhere here like to St. Thomas where I am and where it's a little bit more relaxed and you're away from big congregations of people. So even though this island is a big reliant on tourism, we have people wanting to move here now to get away from sort of the big city mentality and the crowds of people. So it's going to be surprising how this whole thing shakes out. Um, continue watching this channel. One of the best things you could do for the economy and for the housing market is to hit that like button and be sure you subscribe to the channel. And if you ring that little bell down there, it'll let you know every time I put out a video so you won't miss any of this awesome content. And that way I can keep putting out wonderful information like this to help people and inform them. And hopefully they won't lose their ass and lose their house and we can all hit financial independence. We can retire early. We can live the good life on a Caribbean island. And that's it. So keep watching and uh, we'll see you in the next one.